Hi guys, I hope you're doing well today. Well, this sermon is called The Truth of Champions. And I got it when I was um when I was listening to this song by Carrie Underwood and Ludacris uh, called The Champion, which I will attempt to sing in a minute. Um I just and this sermon is going to be a little bit different than how the song sounds and all of that stuff. You'll see. You'll see in a minute what I mean. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for, for this day. Lord God, I pray that you'll permeate our hearts with your word. Hide me behind the cross as I do what you've called me to do. And, uh, and worship you at the same time, God. I pray, Lord God, that this time together will be of substance to not only the people listening up there, but to me. And I pray, Lord God, that you will get the ultimate glory. All this is for you. Let me remove myself, God, and let you reign in my heart and in my life, God. Teach us, speak to us, minister to us in the in these moments together. In in the name of Jesus, Amen. Okay, so I will attempt to do the singing part of this song. There is a hip hop part, but I am not gonna attempt that. Um. Um. So here we go. Uh, the Champion by Carrie Underwood and Ludacris. I'll be the last one standing, two hands in the air, I'm a champ, I'm a champion, you'll be looking up at me when it's over, I live for the battle, I'm a soldier, yeah, I'm a fighter like Rocky, but you fly on your back like Ali, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm the greatest, I'm stronger, hey my dudes can't, hey my dudes can't lose, I'm, oh yeah. Been waiting my whole life, and now it's due or time. I am invincible, unbreakable, unsolvable, unshakable. They knock me down again, up again. I am a champion. You got enough of them. Can't hurt me now. Can't feel the pain. Can't Get me up. I am a champion. You gotta know my name. Can't hurt me now. Can't feel the pain. I, I was made for this. Yeah, I was born to win. I am a champion. When they write my story. They're gonna say I did it for the glory. But don't think I did it for the fame, yeah. I did it for the love of the game, yeah. And this is the chance I'm taking. And all of the records I'm breaking. All, all you people watch, watching the TV. Just go ahead and put your bets on me. Been waiting my whole life to see my name in the light. I am invisible, unbreakable, unstoppable, unshakable. They knock me down again, up again. I am a champion. You gotta know my name. Can't help me now. Can't feel the pain. I was born for this. Yeah, I was made to win. I Down again, up again. I 
get up again. Well, I didn't butcher that too badly, but you get what what I mean. I'll put a link to the song in my in the description box so you could hear the actual real version with the hip hop. It's really cool. I'm so it so sucks the new YouTube rules that I can't play the song for you anymore uh, because they muted out and it's just a lot of song drama. So back to the my sermon. I first of all just let me get the computer thing. Let me get the lyrics down. And let me back up so you can see me. I hope you guys are doing well. I know I'm doing well. I got myself a haircut. Well, let's be real. I shaved my head. And I've been getting a lot of compliments from it. And... I love it. I love just waking up in the morning and going on about my way. It's really cool. Um, so now I'm going back up so you guys can actually see my face instead of my shaved head. <laughs> um, okay. I'm just trying to get into position here and I'll talk while I'm getting into uh, position. So that you don't just hear, that you can at least hear my voice while I'm getting into the position. Yay! Now you can see me. Yay! Now this is great. Um, yeah, so here I am. And I'm... I'm going to talk about today the heart, the truth of champions. Um, the song I just sang and many songs about champions concentrate on the greatness of um, being a champion and the, the prowess of being great and, and uh, the greatest man alive and the king of who you are and everything like that and most sermons ab about this are like go get her sermons and go for your dreams and uh, and just be all you can be and just like they're very motivational and very uh, they just lift you up so high but what people don't talk about is the downside to being that great and up so high. Even some of the lyrics in the set in the song that I just sang um, really talk about being great and I'm the greatest and all that stuff and no one can beat me and I'm going to um, 
You can put your bets on me because I'm going to win. And that's awesome. It's, it's great to have a positive attitude. It's essential. Um, but what I'm going to talk about today is the other side of being a champion. Like, what happens when you come down fr from that whole champion thing? Like, when the, when, when the, the thing or when the boxing match is over and you now have to deal with yourself and your insecurities and your shortcomings and your faults and your failures as they may be um, what do you do then um, and I think I was watching um, something I was watching Red Table Talk and uh, Red Table Talk if you don't know is Jada Pinkett's uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's YouTube, sh uh, not YouTube, um, but Facebook show with her daughter and her mother, um, where they bring guests on, and they were talking to someone about telling their truth, and I and I began to think that that's what a true champion does. A true champion is not just a fighter and not just a great person or, or like in the world standard of being great. A true champion is like you're a fighter but you know when to stop fighting and you know when to um, kind of come down gracefully and I think the world is so much about um, artificial success that when we kind of reach to that level uh, we kind of w where is there to go from there and those of us who don't reach to a certain level of success uh, feel that we've fallen short and all the songs and all the things about being a champion or, or being the best that you can be they focus on the greatness but they don't they don't tell you what to do when you come down from that high because let's be real when you're called great or when you're called a great peep, when you're called a great preacher, when you're called a great great boxer, when you're called a great singer, whatever whatever stratus of life that you that you are in, when you're called great in that field, um, where you go from that, what do you do with that? You can either let it go to your head or you can deny it uh, you can say oh no I'm not that great and and the two extremes of that are awful not are um, are the two extremes of that are equally are equally damaging to one's spirit because if you think too highly of yourself it goes into pride and if you think too lowly of yourself it goes into depression so what do you do with that and I've come to the um, conclusion now that you that you breathe it in for a second and say this feels this feels good yeah yeah i am pretty great and then breathe it out and then you move on i think when when you go to the extremes of feeling too high of 
of yourself and too low of yourself and don't balance it out um you you end up either really depressed or really prideful and i think that that's the thing about god he centers us and causes us to look at life uh from a real from a realistic standpoint and when i think of the ultimate champion i think of uh, david um when he was a little boy he he defeated goliath we all know the story um we um he defeated goliath he 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 did all these great things when he was a lad and he was appointed king when he was just a little boy and then he had that whole bashib 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 thing going on and then where he saw her bathing slept with her got her pregnant killed her husband and then and then he the baby ended up dying and but after all of that he was still called a man after God's own heart so the same david that was um chosen as king was the same david who committed murder and he was still called a man after God's own heart he was still called a champion in his own right so champions are not just great in successes i think the real the real measuring stick of a champion is when you can admit that you blew it you you did it wrong you you just were not on not on course there you just you you just failed at something and and to get back up again i don't think being a champion is minus failure i truly believe being a true champion is you when you're willing to embrace failure embrace what you have done wrong embrace your mistakes and learn from them and use them as a teaching tool because i think i've learned within this past year that that you learn more from your quote of fault failures than you do your than you do your successes i think that people often think that they learn more from, from their successes successes just feel good it feels great when you win but you learn more from your failures than you do your successes it if you let them teach you 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 can let your failures do two things you can let them stop you and scare you or you can let them feed you and teach you that's your so that's your choice are you going to let your failures stop you and scare you scare you and stop you or are you going to let them feed you and teach you feed you meaning are you going to eat them and digest them and and think about them and process them and learn from them or are you going to let them stop you and say oh i did that once i'm not doing that again
I think so, so many people are afraid of uh, being afraid. And I was talking to a friend the other day about fear. And a lot of people say, no more fear, no more fear. But no, I was saying to my friend, it's not that you can't have fear. It's what you do with it. Do you let it propel you? Or do you let it be um, a safe warning thing for you? Or do you let it stop you? I think I was saying to this person, it's not that you can't have fear. It's not that you, that you won't have fear. Fear is a healthy thing. Fear is a necessary thing. If we d don't have fear, we would do all kinds of crazy stuff. But when it counts, can you walk through, even though you have fear, can you take a deep breath and still take the plunge? I don't think, I don't think fear is a bad thing. I think it's a necessary thing, but I think um, it's, it's, it depends on how you use it. If you use it to stop you, like, I'm not going to do that because I'm just so afraid, then that's a bad thing, especially if you use it to stop you from what God has called you to do. If you, if you use it to stop you from doing or saying what, what you know God put in your spirit, and God basically wants me to say to you today, you are a champion. Although you failed, you can get back up, you will get back up, and you, you will use your failures if you let, if you let, he will use your failures as fuel to propel you to where you're supposed to be. Because Oftentimes, what we look at as failures are really fuel to propel us to where we're supposed to be. And, like, for me, I always, well, in a previous video, I talked about uh, diabetes and how I got diagnosed with diabetes in June. And I, I look back at it now and, and think of uh, uh, diabetes as a blessing. It taught me how to eat right. It taught me how to balance what I was eating, how to portion out properly what I was eating. So even my fear of getting diagnosed with diabetes taught me what I needed to know about healthy eating. So, if you let it, fear can teach you things that you would n never learn otherwise. And when you let your fear teach you things, you come out another person. You come out a different person, a better person, a real champion. And also, real champions tell their truth. So, um, real champions don't hide their truth. Like when David was with that Sheba and uh, he got her pregnant and killed her husband. And he was confronted by Jonathan. And Jonathan kind of exposed him to himself. He didn't get filled with pride and said, saying, no, that wasn't me and whatever. He fell down broken before the Lord and said, Lord, forgive me. Essentially, he said, he asked the Lord to forgive him. He got down on his face. And quite often uh, when we quote unquote fail, uh, we are afraid to 
confront ourselves and confront people and confront God and tell our true story. And it's all, but it's, but what we don't realize is the truth is will set, is what will set us free. And I think when you, when you expose your truth, when you tell your truth, freedom comes. But when you keep lying to yourself and saying, no, everything's okay, and you're hurting inside, you won't get healed. Real healing comes when you expose yourself, when you tell the naked, bare butt truth about who you are and where you are and what you're doing and what you've done. Because when you tell it, when you expose something, when you keep something in the dark, it will keep you bound. But when you expose yourself to the light, healing can be found. Thank you, Jesus. And I think a lot of people in church and out of it don't expose themselves to God's light to let, to let him heal them, to let them, to let him restore them to let him minister to them i think i think that uh charismatic churches or traditional churches really don't leave room for god and people to do that we're so focused on our schedule and what we have to get done in the service oh this time we do this this time we do that, this, that there's no room for God to do any real healing. And when we, and the odd time that we do leave room, we, we, we just leave a certain amount of room. It's just not, I don't, I, like, you know what, you know what really breaks my heart? There are so many people that need healing from so many different things, but the church is so scheduled that God doesn't have room to move in those things. And there are certain things we do in church and certain things we do not do in church. And we are afraid to break our um, denominational, our churchy boxes. And I'm not saying that the church can't have an order or the church doesn't need to flow in decency and in order. That's what the Bible says. But I think that it needs to be God's order. I think in most churches, we, we get comfortable with a certain routine and we don't ask God, God, would you like to change anything about the way we do church? And I think that, I think when you allow real healing to begin, when you go into the places that people are really hurting, your, your church, your congregation will experience freedom and that freedom will permeate throughout your community. Because I think that there comes a point where you just have to say, God, I'm bound in this area. You need, you need to help me. And really mean it. Like it needs to be more than a crying and sniveling at the altar. It needs to be a life transformational change. And there's no need to be afraid of transformational change. God knows you. He loves you and knows what you're going through and, and wants to help you with your transformational change. But you need to take the first step as his champion. And real champions 
can admit when they're broken, when they when they need fixing in a certain area. I I think we're afraid to expose ourselves because we're afraid to be less than perfect. But the Lord said, I am come that you may have life. He came for the broken. He came for the non-perfect people. He came for the people that really needed him the most. And I think that he's ready for for churches to make room for those kind of people. And not only churches, he's ready to transform the life of people. To, he's in the life transforming business wherever you are, wherever you sit. The Lord God is in the life transforming business and he's just waiting for you to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, I pray that this word will go into people's spirit. And I pray that they will be transformed by your grace, by the power of your love. And, I'll, and I pray that they'll find the true champion inside of themselves the broken person, the contrite person, the person that is quote unquote successful, the joyful person. All of these things make up a true champion. Lord God, I pray that you'll speak to every heart, speak to every person where we're hurting, where we're broken. Come down and permeate our lives in our spirit in the name of jesus amen okay guys i'll see you later thanks bye